They say there are no ugly children, but I have to respectfully disagree. My wife never wanted to show her childhood photos. Her high school yearbooks were at the bottom of a box in the attic. She didn't look much better in middle school where we met, and she didn't look that attractive in high school either. She was always the ugly one in class and put up with a lot of crap throughout her childhood. I remember. I've been there for some of it. It was bad. To me? Well, I wasn't a prize then either. People have told me I look like a twisty Michael Keaton. At the time, the perception was that Mr. Keaton was already awkward to begin with, so I just took it a step further. I wasn't so much persecuted as I was ignored, and that was fine with me. Okay, not really, but what are you going to do? At least no one hit me or anything like that. Plus, I had a very stupid name. I only knew her enough to nod to her in the hallway, but Gloria and I got to know each other very well in our junior year of high school, when we worked together on the school newspaper. The student editor, a senior, couldn't handle all the pressure, and we were appointed co-editors so we wouldn't be overwhelmed either. God, we worked so hard on this piece of crap. We spent many long hours together editing the submitted copy, rewriting the copy, editing the submitted layout, rearranging the layout, cropping the submitted images, reshooting the images. You get the idea. He became our baby, just ours. Gloria and I often didn't leave school until 11, so late that our counselor cheated and gave us a key so we could lock ourselves in, a definite no-no. As I got to know her, I realized that, no matter what, Gloria was the coolest chick I had ever met, and not just because she was the only girl who would talk to me. I wasn't an outcast or anything like that. She was often alone, but had a good time. She knew everything and had the answer to any question you could ask her. Add to that a rapier wit and a keen ability to read people, courtesy of her father. I thought she was great, just great. We were friends for a long time until we went to our kids' prom together. I don't think either of us realized that we had feelings for each other. We just wanted to go and knew we wouldn't get there any other way. She didn't look so good in her dress. I definitely didn't look good in my tuxedo. But we crossed the friend line that night, and we have the photos to prove it. So there you go. I always thought that everyone agreed that we met on the same level. But in the locker room, I learned how people really feel. I heard Brad Weedy tell Dave Paul that I might be a retarded Michael Keaton, but Gloria just looked retarded. I clenched my fists when I heard this, but they were both athletes, members of the royal family, and either of them could easily cause me a lot of harm, so she was left without protection. When people finally noticed that we were dating, these two were some of our worst detractors, especially Brad, who asked me point-blank how I could even stand being seen with her in public. I would just say, you don't know her, she's amazing, but in a way they were right. I wasn't ashamed of her or anything, but I knew that in terms of attractiveness, I was superior to her by a country mile. Not for nothing, but I was on the water polo team, and my body was lean and muscular enough for girls to at least notice me a little. So was I some kind of saint who doesn't care about appearances and is only impressed by inner beauty, some kind of sapioscule? Of course not. Of course, I lusted after the cheerleaders, especially the glamorous Davida de Lacquer, whose fame lay in her perfect bend over her cotton camel toe shorts. She even teased ugly guys like me, God bless her. I didn't think I could do better than Gloria, and after a while I didn't want to. She truly was the coolest girl I knew. In those days, she was best described as skinny. She had no breasts, no ass, or any curves. Chekhov wrote that eyes and hair were the salvation of unattractive women, but Gloria had short, too short red hair, and she may have had beautiful eyes, but who could tell under those Coke bottles? Her complexion was mostly covered in freckles, with skin sticking out at times. But it was her teeth, ah, uh, her teeth were so big that they practically distorted her entire face. She couldn't understand it because her mother was the picture of splendor and her college-age brother looked more than fine. Her mother saw our grief and urged us both to take it calmly. You never want your parents to be right about something, but in this case we did. She was absolutely financially secure, but growing up took much longer than we had hoped. Have you noticed that Michael Keaton has looked better over time? It's the same for me. 
I was also on the water polo team in college, so my body got better and better. I started getting appreciative looks everywhere I went, which was nice, but I was a small potato. During the summer between her junior and senior years in college, Gloria underwent a transformation. It seemed as if she had turned into a flexible hourglass almost overnight. She later told me that it was like growing pains and a hell of a pain, but we both agreed that it was worth it. Her hair, once she grew it out, became a fiery mane with flowing locks that I couldn't stop touching. Her freckles were gone, except for a cute little spot on the inside of her right knee. She always felt ticklish when I kissed them, and her skin became a milky alabaster miracle. However, the most surprising change occurred in her face. She wore braces for six years. That's right, six damn years. It was just one of those things. I told you she has bad teeth. But, and this is important, they were terrible. But, and this is important after removing braces, laser vision correction, and simply growing up. By the age of 21, she could suddenly outshine young Anne Margaret. She didn't look like her mother, but rather like her Aunt Kim, who was a successful swimsuit model in the 90s. I started to look very smart. All my friends and acquaintances told me that I must have known everything from the beginning, but I was just as surprised as everyone else. Gloria knew this and loved me for it. She was constantly courted, sometimes even when I was standing next to her, but she just laughed. You're kidding me, she said, clinging to me and kissing my neck. Yes, life was good. We were already living together and engaged when all this happened, and neither of us wanted to change anything. We planned to get married as soon as one of us found a job after graduation. It so happened that I found it, but it could easily have been the other way around. Life was going pretty well for us. We rarely quarreled, and when we did, it was honestly at first. We both had successful careers and bought our first small home just three years after we got married. It was difficult at first, but we managed it. We've given each other our virginities before, and it wasn't great. Gloria came to the rescue. After our second, terrible experience, she insisted that we both undergo an intensive training course, which she herself directed, including medical texts, erotica, sex manuals, jokes, and anything that could make us better people. And oh God, we got better. When we left, I think few sex therapists or surrogates knew as much about human sexual response as we did. We both agreed that although neither of us had ever slept with anyone else, we would never, ever cheat. No one else could be as good a partner as we are to each other, especially to us. It was good. I don't think either of us could handle rejection. We both promised to be honest with each other if we ever felt uneasy, prevent problems in the bud. Her father, a recovering alcoholic, shamelessly cheated on her mother for years with many, many partners. Gloria loved him but had, shall we say, very strong feelings about it, and I agreed with her. We got married young, why wait, and we were both happy that we had found our soulmates so early. She called me her hot husband, and I called her my wow wow wife. Don't ask. Pet names are stupid. Our only real problem was Gloria's low tolerance for alcohol. She was definitely on a cheap date. Two beers, and she was completely drunk. One mixed drink made her incredibly horny and ready to do anything. You'd think I'd take advantage of that, but if you were dealing with the real Gloria, the replacement of a limp, drunken body was no fun. This girl had skills. You wanted her to use them. I was hoping this would be a wake-up call when I spent the second New Year's Eve in a row waiting outside the club bathroom while she was sick. There's nothing worse than ending the year listening through the door to your wife throwing up while everyone else counts down the final seconds. Twice. I was angry, but unlucky. Things finally came to a head when she received a ticket for drunk driving and lost her license for six months. The court insisted on her attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. She went with her father, who had been attending such meetings since she was born. It was a way for them to reconnect because he had been out of her life for a very long time at that point. We came to the point where we were grateful for the fine because it forced us all to resolve a few issues. Stop acting so arrogant. It's just like your stupid gambling. You degenerate, she once said angrily. No difference. Of course there is a difference, I replied. I can gamble. 
she had nothing to object to hear. I learned to play poker my freshman year of college in a statistics class, and when Texas Hold'em became a national craze, I made some money. Sorry, made us some money. We were already living together by then, and my little hobby was sometimes the difference between meat and ramen that week. I never received a thank you, but she was more than willing to eat that chicken. As we approached 30, I noticed changes in her. We got married young, planning to have children early. We'll have all the energy in the world to chase them around in our mid-twenties, and when they leave the nest, we'll still be in our forties and alert enough to enjoy time together. No empty nest for us. But for years she resisted. At first there was no clear reason, or even a consistent one. She wanted to advance at work, she wanted to spend more time together, she wanted to wait until she was more mature, what about our savings, we need to travel first, and so on and so forth. How about having a baby right after your high school reunion, she suggested. I'll stop taking them when we get back, and we'll turn into baby-making machines. What do you say? Why wait, I asked, hugging her and kissing her nose. Because it's coming soon, we won't wait long. You know it's going to be stressful. I don't want anything to interfere with our conception process. Why stress, I asked. You hate these people. Are you sure you even want to go? Hell yes, I want to go, she answered. They'll look at all this, and their eyes will pop out of their sockets. I want them to see what they've missed. Hmm, I said, not really approving of it. I don't think I'm missing anything. Of course I didn't, darling, she said, perhaps realizing that she had been insensitive. But you can't blame me for wanting to show off a little, can you? They've made my life worse than hell. It wasn't a picnic for me either, I interjected. True, you had it bad, she admitted, but not as bad as I did. That's why I'm going to rule tonight. Hmm, dear, I said, I hate disappointing you, but as I understand it, it doesn't matter how much you've changed. Everyone strives to return to their predetermined roles. You may not like it. That won't happen, she said. I guarantee you I'll be the hottest thing there and shove it down their throats. What about me? I asked. Where do I fit into your little plan? Oh, you'll be right next to me, my hot husband, she said. I started to doubt him confused about it, but then she started caressing me. Lying in the drowsy aftertaste of sex, I admired her use of a sure, proven feminine technique to shut me up with sex. Of course it worked, duh, but I realized that this was a tactic she had never felt the need to use on me before. She put a distance between us that I didn't like or understand, and I was very worried. Gloria has never shied away from exploring, so when she decided to get in top shape for her homecoming, her trips to our gym, which we were members of but rarely visited, became long and intense. She invited me along, but we both knew she didn't mean it. She knew I hated what she was wearing there and didn't want to watch her get groomed every five minutes. Instead, I found a crazy intra-club basketball game that more than raised my heart rate. Her results were almost legendary. In a few short weeks, she dropped a dress size, and her thighs became iron rods for my pleasure. She had never been in bad shape, but now she had tightened her already great shape to perfection. But it wasn't for me. One day, she left her laptop open when she was late and needed to take a shower urgently. I saw that she was following all the fine people who were going home. Hope Lanwell, Heidi Clemens, Brad and Davida Weed, Roger Mayhew, Dave Paul, all of them from the circle that had made all hell for her. They all had to be there. I hoped that she wouldn't disgrace herself or me too much that night, and that she would finally be able to get rid of the demons that tormented her. Self-esteem is a cruel mistress. I noticed that she avoided making eye contact with me as we drove back to our hometown before our high school reunion, which was a clear sign that something was going on that she didn't want to tell me about. It was behavior I remembered from her drinking days, and I didn't miss it at all, to be honest. You're going to push this hard, aren't you? Tense what? She asked with an innocent look, but I was not deceived. She became increasingly irritable as the weekend approached. It had to mean something. What are you going to do tonight? Why don't you tell me what you mean? I can't answer your question unless you're clear. I can't read your mind. 
She sounded annoyed, which was another one of the old tricks she used to put me on the defensive. She knew that this always made me withdraw to avoid conflict. I was already tired of it, and I wasn't in the mood. If she was going to manipulate me, she should have at least come up with new tricks. You know exactly what I mean, I said sharply. Why didn't you let me see your dress? Because I want to surprise you with how sexy I'm going to look, dumbass, she said playfully. Oh, I know how sexy you are, I said. I'm proud of you. I don't mind you showing off. Okay, she said triumphantly, because that's what I'm going to do. But don't show too much, okay? Define too much. I said nothing. Look, Rick, you know me. Have I ever embarrassed you? I was still silent, but I probably gave her a look. I mean, besides that, God, she muttered. It's been three years, three years. You'd think that would have given me some credit, at least. Just tell me what you're going to do, I said. Well, Rick, she replied irritably, I'm not going to do anything, but I'm going to look amazing, I'm going to have fun, and they're all going to regret being so mean to me back then. Why? Why what? Why would they be sorry now? Why should it matter? That was then. Who cares what you are now, ten years later? Oh, Ricky, 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 she sang. You know a lot about a lot of things, but you don't know women. They will care, trust me. So these are just women you want to impress? I asked. Mostly, she said, sounding a little defensive. Honey, you can't blame me for wanting a little revenge on the guys who were so nasty, you just can't. Are you happy with me, Gloria? I asked. Are you satisfied with our life? Oh, honey, she said, taking off her seat belt and moving closer to cuddle with me. Is it all about this? I love you. I love us. Don't ever doubt it. Yeah, well, I notice that there's no we in everything you say. It's all me and me, and now that I think about it, also me. You don't seem to care that I'm with you. Maybe it would be better for you if I stayed at home. That's not true at all, she hissed, pulling away. Oh, really? I said coldly. What will I wear tonight? What? You'd think you'd want your man to look good, too. Be proud of him so we can make a great impression together maybe even coordinate or something, but you have no idea, do you? But you look good in everything, honey. You know how to dress. I trust you. Please. We were silent for several minutes. I saw something working in her head. So what are you going to wear anyway? She finally asked. None of your damn business, I snapped. Okay, she said. Truce, I deserve it. I said nothing. What was there to say at all? Listen, she said, approaching me again. You don't know what it was like for me back then. I think I know, I said venomously. I think you've told me about this often enough. I think I've heard you share it at your meetings ad nauseum. But you don't know, she insisted. You think you know, but you don't. I'm tired of you patronizing me, she continued, pulling away from me as much as she could, pressing herself against the door as she started to get turned on. I'm tired of this. I've been waiting for this night for years. I remember thinking about this when I was waiting to get eye surgery. Is it true? I asked dryly. So long. Yeah, it's been that long, idiot, she said. You don't know what it was like to be an ugly girl. Don't even try to say anything different, she said, immediately assuming that I would try to deny or downplay her words. I'm a damn swan and I'm going to fly today. Don't you dare hold me back. I'm not trying to hold you back, I said. Yes, you are trying, she screamed. Yes, you're trying, Rick. I looked at the speedometer and saw that it had reached 98 miles per hour. I didn't even notice it. Honey, I said, slowing down. We need to slow down before I get us off the road. We were almost a hundred. Oh, God, be careful, honey. Look, let me just say it, I said. I'm not trying to be the last word, I'm not, but I didn't fall in love with you because of your looks, and I don't think you fell in love with me because of that either. Is not. I always tell everyone who asks me, you were are the coolest girl I know. That's what they didn't know about you back then. It's their loss. 
Just be yourself and show them how cool you are. Hotness is just a bonus. Is it true? One day we'll both be ugly again, but you'll still be the coolest girl I know. I don't deserve you, do I? She asked, her voice trembling. Did she wipe away her tears? Not really. I didn't really like her dress, but I think, objectively speaking, it could have been worse. It was turquoise or aquamarine or sea green, and it served its purpose of highlighting her fair skin and making her green eyes pop, but it was also too short and showed more cleavage than I was comfortable with. However, Gloria adored him and enjoyed the attention. All eyes were on her, and she was fearless about it. As I predicted, the old groups formed, but she moved easily among them all and pulled me along with her every time. As we approached the cool kids' table, I felt her tense up. We don't have to talk to these people, I said, squeezing her hand. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid, she said, and when I looked down, I realized that she wasn't afraid. She was excited. Everyone was polite. There were air kisses and fake hugs, but as much as they were happy to see Gloria, they were just as unhappy to see me. Ulrich, Brad told me without extending his hand. Bradley, I answered, not holding out mine either. Did we interrupt the conversation? Gloria asked. Not really, Davida said wearily. She married Brad somewhere along the way. Big surprise. They're having a big poker game later. You probably remember them. The boys were such card sharks back then. Oh, I remembered the big poker games very well. They took place late on Friday nights and only invited rich or cool people. Big surprise that I didn't go. I was never invited, so naturally I was always dying to go. Rick plays poker, said Gloria. Why not let him play? Not for the faint of heart, Dave said. I don't think he can handle it. Don't worry, I don't insist, I said, but inside I felt resentful. God, these guys were still assholes. He's good. Gloria started to say, but I nudged her lightly with my foot to stop her. There was no need to let this cat out of the bag. For God's sake, what's wrong with you guys? Davida asked. Admission is $5,000, Rick. They will never go for less, but if you have that money, of course you can play. Who? asked Roger Mayhew. We all said, said the pretty lady, whom I assumed was his wife. I agree with Davida. What's wrong with you guys? I'm serious, it's not a problem, I said, feeling awkward. No, no, Brad chuckled. The game is at 1.30 in room 615. If you can put in five, you're welcome. You might need more because things can get ugly quickly. This game is for the big boys. You might have to sell a car or something like that. Listen, idiot, you have no idea what kind of thing I have. I was starting to seethe. Because Gloria had studied them all, I knew where we both stood. He should have looked too. Maybe then he would shut up. Hey, Bradley, not cool, Gloria said sharply. Now she nudged me with her foot. You apologize to my husband right now. You promised everyone would behave tonight. Don't ruin everything before the evening starts. I looked at her in surprise and saw Davida doing the same with Brad. He looked at Gloria angrily, and she looked clearly uncomfortable. Have you two been communicating? I asked. Well, yes, she said, shifting from foot to foot, very unladylike. Davida looked interested, and Brad was looking anywhere but at us. For what? I just wanted to know who would be here. Oh, really? Davida asked, but there was some underlying meaning in her voice that I didn't catch. Yeah, well, Gloria hesitated for a moment. It was nice to see everyone. We'll talk more later, okay? She pulled me away, and we continued chatting with other couples and groups. Gloria gradually overcame her nervousness and became herself lively and sociable. I think she was hoping it would all go away. I was mostly silent, angry, all evening. Finally, I pulled her aside. What? she asked, seeing the expression on my face. Don't shit me. Why didn't you tell me you were talking to him? Well, Mr. Arrogant, I wouldn't say we're really in commonality. We just corresponded a little about the alumni meeting. It doesn't matter anyway. Are you telling me about everyone you talk to every day? 
almost, especially if it's a woman, and especially if it's someone I hate and who tormented me all through school. I don't understand you. God, Rick, people can just say hi, you know, it's called the internet. I don't know what this all means, I said, but you're hiding something. We need to talk. Oh, talk, 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 Gloria sang. That's all we do talk. Well, not now. This is my night. You will not ruin it with your big whim, do you hear? I just looked at her, stunned. What the hell is going on? She went crazy. Was she high? Did she have some kind of delayed development? Thank you, I heard her say when the waiter finally brought the drinks we ordered. I took a sip and realized it was rum and coke. Well, one explanation. Gloria, this is. Yes, Cuba Libra, my favorite. Brad ordered them for me. I made sure you got one too. Please. Oh, I get it now. How much have you had to drink already? This is the first, Sherlock. You were with me all night. When would I have had the chance? Put it down. Right now. We're getting out of here. I reached out to grab her hand, but she pulled it away, staring at me. Gloria, what about your sobriety? This is my business. This is my sobriety, not yours. Well then, what about our marriage? I'm warning you, you're walking on the edge. Listen, bastard, she hissed, baring her teeth. When we said those vows, I don't remember them saying that you own me, okay? Stop being so overprotective. I can drink what I want, I can dance with whoever I want. This, she gestured around her hands, pointing at his body, mine and I can do what I want with it. You can either fit in or get out of the way. Finally, an easy choice, I said and stood up from the table. No, wait, wait, she screamed, pretending to get up and follow me. Please sit back down. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't sit down. I stood there, looking down at her. Just give it to me, okay? She begged, looking at me hopefully. Please? If it means you get drunk and flirt with other men, then no, I won't give it to you. Are you flirting? Give it to you? She screamed. Who the hell do you think you are? I give it to you, Jesus. I'm your husband, in case you forgot. And what are you talking about? I asked. Those are your words. You just said it. Fuck off. Do what you want, she snapped. I will stay. No, fuck off. Do what you want, I replied. I'm leaving. So I left, but not far. I was out of the room for a minute, but then I came back and stood in the back for about an hour, watching her get more and more drunk, dancing obscenely with everyone, but always coming back to Brad and Dave. Especially Brad. Nobody spoke to me for a long time. I think they were embarrassed for me and didn't know what to say. Who can blame them? But after a while, Kenny Kirk and Roger Mayhew came over and bought me a beer. I remembered Kenny fondly, but I couldn't understand why Roger wanted to talk to me, since he was part of Brad's circle. Until I looked back and saw that Gloria was nowhere to be found. She disappeared. I escaped the two snakes and took the elevator up to our room, but of course she wasn't there. I sat there shaking and then decided to hell with it and went to room 615. It was the only other room I knew. Someone was there and they were having sex. I put my ear to the door but could not make out who it was because of the noise in the room. I knocked on the door several times but no one answered. I decided to sit and wait, feeling more and more stupid and compassionate every minute. When a couple walked by and stared at me sitting on the floor, I realized that I would be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't Gloria who came out, but if it wasn't her, then where was she? Why don't we see what's going on there, Hing? Let me help you up. I looked up and saw Davida lean over and extend her hand. Where have you been? I muttered, letting her take my hand. Was doing homework. Plus, I needed this, she said, waving her key card. I'm not supposed to have it. This is the room for their big fucking game. What was waiting for me inside was what I was afraid of and what became my worst nightmare. Gloria was there, having sex with Brad. They didn't even notice when I entered. Who to kill first? Brad was a traitor, but Gloria. Ah, Gloria, I thought, 
You were supposed to be my one and only, my true love, and now this. Betrayal. We will never go back to the way things were, never. We will never have children. We'll never grow old together. But she was drunk. Very drunk. Totally drunk. Maybe it's not her fault. Oh, being a slutty bitch is her fault, but it's... It's my fault because I didn't protect her despite how she treated me. Shouldn't I have protected her no matter how angry she was with me? Shouldn't I have gotten her out of this situation despite her anger? This would not have happened if I had not been gloomy. What kind of husband was I? I turned and saw Davida come in after me with her phone in her hands, documenting what was happening. What are you doing? I barked at her. What do you think? She answered. I think we'll both need this later. For what? I asked, starting to move forward, desperately trying to break them. Because it's not what it seems, she said, moving closer to get a better angle. Davida? Brad croaked. Oh shit, how did you get here? You should be with Hope and... She glanced at him, and if it was a smile, then I wouldn't want to see it. She was still smiling her stupid smile. She was truly, completely passed out. Don't do this, Davida warned, grabbing me by the shoulder when she saw me walking towards Brad with murder in my eyes. Why not? Gritting his teeth, trying to shake it off. Because even with your pants down, he will beat you to a pulp. Unless you have MMA skills that you didn't have before. I stood there watching Brad pull up his pants. He looked upset, but clearly not out of fear of me. Well, do you have it? She asked sharply. No, I admitted, cuckold and weakling. Damn it. So, take your wife out of here, she said. Take her to your room, but before you do anything, you must talk to me. Okay, I muttered, approaching Gloria, who fell into a stupor. That damn smile was still on her face. Crap, I picked her up and threw her over my shoulder. She was like dead weight, completely passed out. Brad caught my eye and for a moment he changed from looking worried to smug. Victory. I turned to leave in disgust and shame. I'm serious, Davida said. She took the card out of her purse and put it in my jacket pocket. Call me as soon as you put it down. I'll call, I said, walking down the corridor, planning not to do anything like that. I returned to the room with Gloria and laid her on the bed. After thinking a little, I took off her dress and put her under the blanket. Sitting and looking at her beautiful elephant shoulders peeking out from under the blanket, I couldn't help but start crying and crying hard. What happened to us? I thought everything was perfect okay, not perfect, but we weathered the storm and then she had to do it. Why did she let things get this far? Why didn't I do more to take care of her? I don't know how long it lasted, but at some point I heard a knock on the door, which turned into knocking when I ignored it. Let me in, Rick. I heard Davida's voice. I'll make a scene until you open it. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, okay, I grumbled, opening the door. You didn't call me, she said as she entered, barely glancing at Gloria, who was snoring, not caring about anything in the world. Sorry, I said. It's hard, isn't it? She asked, wiping a tear under my eye. Yes. Well, I'm going to make this either better or worse, maybe both, I don't know, she said handing me a stack of stapled papers. What is this? I asked suspiciously. Instructions to read, she said. That's why I disappeared. I hope it was worth it, I said. If you had been there, perhaps this would not have happened. That's definitely not true, she said. And that's why I brought this. What is this? His messages. He thinks he's erasing them, but they never leave the server. It's a good start, but it's just his side so I have a spy app on his phone. Software installed by a private detective. I installed this a long time ago. I haven't checked recently. Sorry I didn't check. Because, sorry, Rick, just read them. But don't start from the beginning if you don't want to see how this whole sordid story unfolded. It's too much now. Start on page nine, where I underlined. The ninth page? Are there really so many of them? What will I find? Just read it. This will explain everything. And I'm very, very sorry, Rick, that's true. So what are you going to do? I asked, escorting her to the door. Obviously, I'm not staying in our room. I didn't mean to. 
They're having a poker game there, remember? Are they still playing? I asked in disbelief. What? Stop the most important game in the world, just because two marriages are collapsing? She asked with contempt. I thought you were playing poker, Rick. Looks like no. I was going to stay with Laura and Hope, but now it's impossible. Hope and I will talk. Probably Laura too. I rented a separate room for myself, although I'm unlikely to be able to sleep. Me too. You know, she said quietly, you can come with me if you don't want to stay here with her. I think I'll like it, Davida, but it doesn't have to be anything like that, Rick. She kissed me on the cheek and turned away. But that could be everything. You decide for yourself. I appreciate it. Not now, she said, leaving. Just start from page nine. You won't feel better, but at least you'll know. After Davida left, I stretched out on the other bed and started reading from page nine, just as she said. When I finished, I started over and read everything to the end. She was right. Seeing how things unfolded was too much, and she was right when she said she knew better. Wake up, I said to Gloria, trying to wake her up. Hem, she moaned. Come on, bitch, I said sharply. We're leaving here. What? She began to come to her senses. What you? We are leaving. I don't want to, she said in a childish voice and rolled over to go back to sleep. Crap. Okay, it will be more difficult, but she still leaves. I put her dress back on, zipped up the most obvious suitcase, and, taking it, threw her over my shoulder. Her dress rode up, exposing her to everyone who wanted to see. Well, okay. Fortunately, there was no one in the corridor when I dragged Gloria to the elevator and out to the car. The strangest thoughts flashed through my head. Poor Gloria, I thought, so much work to get her body in shape, and he didn't even bother to look at it. He only saw your ass and the back of your legs. Your milky skin and exquisite body take time to be appreciated. Well, if you hurry, you will make people laugh. I threw it in the back seat of my Lexus. It was night and the skin was like ice. She was shivering from the cold, but I didn't care. I put her suitcase in front of me. If I had put it in the trunk, I would have been reminded of the blanket we kept there, but I doubt I would have covered her. I looked at my watch and felt a slight shock. It was only 12.15. I would have thought it would dawn soon. This would make it easier to disembark, but I still needed to make a call. Hey, Rick, her mom answered after a few rings. I didn't expect to hear from you this evening. I know, Karen. Sorry, I said. I hope it's not too late. Well, a little, but nothing. How was the meeting? We're still at dinner tomorrow, right? I don't know, I muttered. Listen, I'm calling to warn you. I'm coming to you. I'll leave Gloria with you. What? Are you leaving her? Why? What's happened? She fell silent, and her voice became tense. She's not drunk, is she? Well, yes, but that's not. What did she do? Karen demanded. She slept with someone else, I said. I don't want to be with her now. She did what? Karen almost screamed. I cannot believe it. There must be some explanation. Oh, it is, I said bitterly. Do not worry about it. I'll be with you in fifteen minutes. She met me at the door. We didn't say a word as I carried Gloria upstairs to the spare bedroom, where we had slept together many times in happier times. I noticed Karen glance at her daughter and her wrinkled dress. I was about to run out the door back to the car, but she held my hand. Come tomorrow, she said. You need to talk. I don't want to, I said. There's nothing to talk about here. She will still lie. You don't know that, she said. You have to let her explain. Don't throw away everything, ten good years, because of one mistake. I didn't throw anything away, I said loudly. I didn't shout, but my voice was strained, and she backed off. Sorry, sorry, I apologized. I didn't want to take it out on you. It's okay, she said, patting my hand. This is a tense time. Thank you. But please come tomorrow, at 12.30, as planned. Do it for me, if not for her. It's not fair, Karen, I said. Wrong, it's not your style. I know, she said. It just shows how serious I am. Please come. Good, I said, but only for you. Thank you, she said, taking my hand with both of hers and squeezing it warmly. 
We'll figure it out. I've already figured it out, I said. On the way back to the hotel, I noticed that it was not yet one in the morning. On a whim, I stopped at an ATM near the hotel and withdrew $5,000. I had to move the money around a bit and pay a fine, but I got it. I hope they let me play. I showered, ate an energy bar, and drank water. It's best to stay hydrated when you're planning to stay up late at night. At 1.15 I headed to room 607 with cash in hand. We sat in awkward silence as we waited for the last player, who of course was Brad. He looked a little dejected when he walked through the door, but perked up when he saw me. You hear? He asked and laughed. What, I took your wife, so you came here to take my money, protect her honor, or something? It's too funny. I just came for a friendly game, I lied. I think we've already established that she has no honor, so don't worry about it. I think you're a bastard for what you did, but that's what I always thought, so let's play. I don't think things will go the way you think, Roger said. We should just take your money and kick you out, but my wife will kill me. Well, you still have a wife who could kill you, so you're already one step ahead of me, I said. Just a friendly game, right? Don't worry, I'll leave as soon as I lose all the money. I ruined their game that night. I would still do it, even without all our drama. After forcing them to let me into the game, Roger's wife Claire, I learned changed it from a friendly, mid-stakes game to a hostile situation. They wanted me to leave, but they wanted my money, so we continued. The first few hands were tense, but after that the old friends started making fun of each other, and it was like old times when I wasn't there, even when I was in the same room with them. Do you love poker? I love it. I'm dying to tell you how the night went, to retell every hand, to dazzle you with how amazing I was, but this is not a card story. Let me tell you, there were seven of us. Me, Brad, Dave, Roger, Kenny Kirk, who couldn't even look at me, and two other guys from their group that I vaguely remembered from back then. We gathered around the same table from which I took Gloria earlier. Fortunately, he didn't smell like anything. Once out of sight, I learned that Brad usually wins these games. I think he expected it to be the same today, but I began to suspect from the very beginning that he was holding several cards and began to watch him closely. In the first game, I was convinced of this. He was getting ready to play his card when he caught my eye. He knew that I understood and did not dare to play it, knowing that I had every reason to expose him. He was forced to play fair. I've played small stakes poker and seen players lose as much as $75, so believe me, the pot can get big when you go into the game with 5,000. These guys told a lot of stories about how great they were in the old days, but they either weren't as good as they remember, which is quite possible, they were still drunk, which is also likely, or they had lost their skills. It was most likely a nice combination of all three. It took a long time for me too, but I was completely sober and didn't forget a damn thing. Without his gimmick, Brad ended up being my favorite opponent, all of himself, without a head, always holding a grudge. He was easy to bluff and easy to manipulate into a bluff that anyone could spot ten miles away. By the time everyone decided to call it a day, the only other person left in the black besides me was Kenny, who had made more than a respectable $1,500. Dave and a couple of other players were down or just down, but the rest was mine. The best, 22,000 of them were Brad's. That's right, Mr. Big Mind. What an idiot. His main move, besides cheating, of course, was an excessive bet to intimidate everyone. This group was inexperienced enough to give up every time he did. I've seen this shit before and almost always knocked it down. I've lost a few times this way, but I've won huge, huge pots twice. He continued to make the same mistakes, unable to stop when he lost. He made one ridiculous, impossible bet after another, trying to get even by asking for a doubling of bets over and over again. It can add up. Hey, wait a minute, he said angrily as we started exchanging chips for money. You can't just leave without giving me a chance to get even. Brad, we're all done, said one of the others, Doug, I think. He seemed too concerned with making sure everyone got their chips and the correct amount of money back. I think he remembered more about the game with Brad than he said. What about you, cuckold? 
Brad asked me with smugness. Does it fix everything if you take my money? It won't change what happened. Of course not, I said, smiling at him. But it helps. Then give me one more chance. One hand, you and me. You've already had enough chances, I said, waving my money in front of his nose. Sorry, and besides, I don't think you have anything left to bet. I don't want your shitty car. Got a Rolex or something. No, but I have one thing you might like, he said, walking out with the phone. I'll be back soon. Don't get up. We all sat in another one of those awkward silences. Poor Kenny still couldn't look at me, so I had fun invading his personal space, glaring at him and watching him squirm. She's not talking to me, Brad said as he walked back inside. Dave, Rog, go get her. Bring her here. Don't take no for an answer. Do you mean that we... Just bring her, damn it. He turned to the rest of us as they left. Guys, do any of you still smoke? Why don't we take a smoking break? Would you like something from the minibar? The little bottles are still cold, and I think there's beer in there. Water for me, I said. Of course, he said, tossing me one. No beer for you. It's almost dawn. I drink water too, Doug said. I think I'll leave soon. No, no. Wait. Wait, Brad said nonchalantly. He seemed very comfortable for a guy who had just lost 20,000. Now everything is just beginning. A few minutes later, Dave and Roger returned, both of them literally dragging Davida inside by force. Brad, what the hell is going on? She screamed. The only thing we can talk about now is through my lawyer. Why did you make those bastards drag me here? She looked around the room with some anxiety, realizing that she was alone in a hotel with a bunch of guys, all friends of the one she was fighting with, until she saw me and visibly relaxed. She raised her eyebrow at me, and I did the same. I had no idea what was going on. I don't know why I'm here, but you can. Shut up, Brad said. There was a threat in his voice, and she immediately retreated. It was clear that this was not the first time he had bullied her. He was a big guy. Do you like the house? What? It's a simple question, he said. Do you like our fucking house? This will be my home as soon as I... Just shut up, he said sharply. Sit down. I have news for you. She came and sat next to Kenny, who was sitting next to me. After a moment, even he got the hint and stood up so she could take his place. Enrico and I are going to have a big payment soon, and we won't be able to do it because little Ulrich is here, he told her. The store is likely to close. What are you talking about? I took 15000 from the safe before we left on Friday, he said. For games, which I lost. You did what? She asked, horrified. He will kill you, probably literally. How could you do this? It's not my fault, he said. I always win. You always lie, I heard from somewhere. Probably from Doug. So here's the thing, he continued. And this is where you come in. Here is my proposal, he said, looking at me. You and me, one hand, directly. All the money you took from me is against her. Against her, I said. Against me, she said. You are crazy. What she said, I said. It makes complete sense, he said. I slept with your wife. Now you can sleep with mine. You always wanted her. Everybody wants it. I'm not your wife anymore. You're a piece of shit, she replied angrily. What makes you think? Wait, I said, touching her hand. Brad, aside from the absolutely disgusting nature of you exposing this beautiful woman. Oh, she's real, he began. Besides how disgusting it is, I interrupted. I can't imagine any sex that would cost more than $20,000. Sorry, Davida, I said, turning to her. You know how much I appreciate you, but... I thought it was 15, now it's 20, she said. You really are a loser, Brad. And don't worry, Rick, she laughed. I don't think I'm worth that much either. Maybe more than once, Brad said. Kenny Kirk, how much would you pay for one time with whom? Who looks like her? How should I know? I don't do that, Kenny defended himself. Oh, nonsense, we all know what you do, Brad said, followed by laughter in the room. I suddenly felt very sorry for Kenny. You may never have been able to afford someone of her caliber, but you probably know how much it costs. 
Well, Kenny looked Davida up and down. She's not so young anymore. Lord, I'm 28, Davida said, sounding offended despite herself. Let me go from here. It's humiliating. A thousand, Kenny said. I think that's fair. Okay, then you'll have 22 times, Brad said. This is more than fair. I only got your wife once, and that was only three quarters because I didn't finish. This is madness. I'm not going to do this, Davida spat. Sorry, Rick, no offense. What, apologizing for not letting him treat you like an easy girl, I asked. I would be offended if you thought I was capable of something like that. She smiled at me in gratitude and patted my hand. You two are so cute, Brad said. But I want you to think about it, Davida. If the store goes bankrupt, we will lose more than just our house. I won't be able to pay you child support. I will also end up on the street. You'll have to find a real job. No more interior design. This is not a game, Davida defended herself. Yes, Brad snorted with contempt. How much did you earn last year? You better reconsider this offer. I'm just saying. She probably won't do it, Kenny said. I know bitches like her, Rick. She will trick you into paying money and then won't give you anything. Oh, now you're talking to me, I asked him sarcastically. Thanks for the news. I have news for you too. The water is wet. He sank into his chair. I felt bad for being part of a group that humiliated him, but damn, this guy was unbearable and also played a part in today. At least he was complicit, so no mercy. Fair enough, Brad said. Payment is not required yet, um. He checked his phone, two and a half weeks. You don't have to give me my money back if she doesn't do it. You'll have enough time to get them back, but not so much that you'll get tired of her. This will take me a lot longer. God, you're such a bastard. Davida seethed. I can't wait until I see you. And one more thing, dear, he said. You probably won't have to do this. What? You're just collateral. He can lose and you won't have to do anything with him. But he must know that you will do it. Otherwise, he will not place the bet. And if I lose, you still have to do it. Otherwise, it's not a bet, but it's between you and him. I still won't argue with you, I said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun, but I think it's time for me to go. I hope we never meet again. Davida, you seem nice. I hope everything works out for you. If you need my help to leave. No, wait, please, she said, grabbing my hand and looking into my eyes. Rick, are you just? I don't know. She trailed off. Our moment together was probably short by most people's standards, but it felt like an eternity and a nanosecond at the same time. I could do this for her. Okay, I'll play one hand with you, I said. This is just wonderful, Brad said, beaming. Fine. Why don't you sit there? I'll sit here. Rog, do you want to take it? Of course, why not? Roger answered lazily, suddenly turning into Mr. Savvy. He, Brad, and Dave huddled at the end of the table, creating a united front. On the other side, there was an empty chair for me. I didn't like the look of it. It was some kind of setup. God, these guys were terrible poker players. They couldn't hide anything, especially Roger. One condition, I said. Doug, can you get my jacket? She's there on the chair. Can you get a deck of cards from your outer pocket? On the left side, I think. I bought them at the liquor store before coming. Cards? Dave asked. Yes, I said. I think we should play this hand with a new deck, right? There's so much at stake. He and Brad exchanged glances, but what could they do? Gotcha. Seriously, dude, Disney princesses. Doug complained, tearing open the packaging with a new deck. Hey, it's either this or my little pony. I'm not armor, I said with a straight face. I don't even know what that means, Davida said, but Kenny knew. I could tell. I don't know either, I said. We exchanged smiles and the game began. Brad couldn't win a fair game or fortune wasn't on his side. Be that as it may, my full house beat him straight. He was just one card short of a straight flush, but alas, no luck. I can't believe it, he said with a sour look. Well, you two will figure it out, and when you're done with her, We'll arrange a money transfer. I don't owe you any money, I said. I never should have. 
What? It was a deal. It was for money. Brad, have you ever gambled? Asked Doug, who apparently wasn't a fan of Brad anymore. It wasn't a she for the money deal. It was a she against the money deal. You lost a lot of money. Then you bet something else and lost that too. All. End of story. Let's go, Davida said quietly, taking my hand. I don't want to see you anymore, Brad. Don't come into the house. We'll still have it for a while. You're not welcome. Have Hope and her sister take your things. Hope? Yes, I found out about that too, idiot. Maybe her husband will let you stay with them. I'll ask him for you. Davida, I... Just shut up, she said, and we walked out the door. Your room or mine? She asked. Oh, yours, definitely, I said. There is a rumpled bed in my room that smells like her. We sat in two chairs in her room and looked at each other. After a minute or two, she stood up and brought two bottles of water, passing one to me. What are you going to do? She asked. About what? About her. Ah, I said. We're basically done. It's all over except the screaming. Are you sure about this? You have been together for a long time. You are perfect for each other. You think so? I chuckled. Well, this is the opinion of one woman, and it does not coincide with her opinion. I don't think so, she said. I think she just got carried away with something and it got out of control. That's all. No offense, D.D., I said, gritting my teeth, but you are ready to accept much more than I ever could. The plans she had, the things she said in those messages, how can I forgive that? You can forgive, but maybe never forget, she asked, smiling. It's just a cliché, and why are you smiling? I started to get angry. It's not funny. I'm not laughing. Oh, sorry, she said quickly. That's not the point. Sorry. Well, what then? You called me D.D. You've never called me that before. You never allowed it. It's not like that at all. I never knew you well enough, I said. You were on the pedestal, queen of the ball. I was downstairs. There was no D.D. there, only Davida. I think I need to apologize to you too. No, you never did anything bad to me. You've always been nice to me. I was just out of your attention, not your fault. It seems to me that I am also to blame. No. Seriously, you can. I'm not as worthless as he describes me. He just likes to put me down. Doesn't matter. No, I'm serious. I admit I don't have much to do here, but that's because it's here. I'm actually pretty good. I have a degree. I have contacts. There are many opportunities for me if I move to the city. This is where we are. Understood. More precisely, where I am, I said. Damn, I need to start thinking about things differently. Take your time, Rick, she said, getting up and sitting on the bed next to the chair to hug me. It takes time. It will hurt. Very. What is your secret? I asked. It seems we are in the same boat. Not at all, she laughed. My ship sailed a long time ago, a very long time ago. I had six years to come to terms with this. Wow, six years. I know. Don't say that, she said. No need. I know that I'm weak. I'm a coward. I should have left a long time ago, but I was afraid. It's difficult, I said. I'm not judging you, I promise. And I had serious job offers, she said defensively. A lot of. I believe you. I can make a few calls and have a job, no, a career by the end of next week. I won't start from the bottom. This is cool. I just need to move to the city. We sat in silence, each immersed in our own thoughts. So, she said. So, 22 times. I told you not to worry about it, I said, annoyed. It was never about that. You don't have to do this. What if I want to? What? I've always liked you, Rick. Is it true? Yes, seriously. Oh, tell me. Since when? For a very long time, she said. Please tell me that you remember how I always bowed down in front of you. Don't hurt a girl's pride. Of course I remember, I said, smiling at this memory. It was one of the most vivid memories of my life at that time. Only then, she asked, pouting her lips sweetly. No, still. But didn't you do this for everyone? Absolutely not, she said, offended. I admit, I teased the athletes, but who else besides them, and you did I do this to? K. 
Kenny said what you did, and Pat Lorry, if I'm not mistaken, did too. They are liars. I never did this for them. Never. Why for me then? Honestly, this all started because of Gloria, she said, embarrassed. You were so sweet, so brave when you were with her, despite all the difficulties. I really admired you for that. I started paying attention to you and realized how kind, funny, and smart you are. So let me understand correctly, I said. You were impressed by the way I treated Gloria, my girlfriend, so you teased me into paying attention to you. I know, I know, she smiled. I was young, okay? I didn't know many ways to show a guy that I liked him. This was my standard method. What are you doing now? I asked, smiling back. About the same, she said, leaning over and placing her hand on my chest. My vocabulary is maybe a little better. She leaned down, leaving her face so that it was my choice. I leaned down and our lips touched gently. I had never kissed anyone other than Gloria and couldn't help but compare for a second until I put it aside and decided to live in the moment. It was pleasant and lasted exactly as long as needed. Would you go on a date with me if I asked? I asked when we separated. I don't know, she said. Honestly, who can say? So much had to happen for this to happen. Oh. It sounded like she was reassuring me, but even now, ten years later, the answer was no. But I know I liked you, she said, leaning in to kiss me again. This time the kiss lasted longer and was more passionate. She caressed my breasts, but I still kept my hands to myself. She noticed. I know it's probably too early, she said, but if not, I didn't think for a second. It was all over between me and Gloria. My sexual future was uncertain. I knew I wasn't a great hero, but this gorgeous woman not only wanted me, but she liked me. This wasn't pity sex. Not too soon, I growled and leaned in for a more passionate kiss. She screamed and pulled me towards her to lie on top of her on the bed. We kissed, touching each other everywhere. I gently stroked her soft, full breasts, leaving no part unexplored. Rick, she asked dreamily, for the first time, can I, can I ask you something? I know you won, so it should be your way, but this has nothing to do with the bet, I said angrily, moving away from her. I would like you to understand this beauty. Okay, she smiled at me. Sorry. Then we can do whatever we want, I promise, but for the first time. Yes. Will you do me a favor? I thought this was what we were doing now, I said, confused. Rick, I want you to make love to me, not just fuck me. All they do to me is just have it. Brad always does this, and so does everyone before him. They were boys. I think it will be different with you. I'll try, I said. Don't worry, I can do it. Because, like you said, Brad just treated me like I was easy to get, she said, almost crying. I don't think I can stand it if you do that too. I would never do that, I promised. As long as we don't do some kinky role playing in the future. You're funny. I don't even know what exactly I'm asking for. I think we can figure it out, I said. We kissed for a long time. Long, gentle explorations as we slowly removed each other's clothes. It wasn't a hard task to go slowly with her. She was only the second person I had been with, and she was amazing. I wanted to see, touch, and try everything, so I was definitely going to spend time on it. I was glad she was on the same page and brave enough to say what she wanted. I started kissing her throat, ready to go lower, when I decided to state the obvious. You know that I haven't been with anyone but her, I said. I know, she said, hugging me back to her. You care? A little, I admitted. I understand that it ruins the mood, what I'm doing now, but what she wrote in those messages. S-H-H-H, she said pushing me down so that my face was between her breasts. She didn't say anything about it. She said terrible things, but not about that. But I, I'm not her, I'll never be her, she said. But I think I have my advantages. I think you'll like it, she said with a smile. Definitely, I said, gently stroking her buttocks. I want to tell you something, she said, getting up to kiss me. And I'm not just saying this. The way you already treat me, the way you kiss me, it's better than anything I've ever had. 
I'm so excited to make love to you that I can hardly contain myself. About. Nice to hear. We made long, tender love. It was. It was. She said, placing her hand on my chest. I don't even know what to call it. It won't always be like this, I said. I know, she sighed. How soon will magic die? Is that what you mean? This really kills the mood, Rick. I'm saying the opposite, stupid, I said. It was the first time. It will only get better. Just imagine how good it will be when we get to know each other's bodies better. Don't think about it, she smiled, running the back of her hand across her forehead, then became serious. Rick, I'll only say this once because it might hurt. I was with both of you, and if she traded that for even five minutes with him, I have to tell you, when she comes to her senses, she will be the most miserable bitch on the planet. Davida. No, I'm serious. She will haunt you. You have to be strong to face her if you want because you have a lot of history together. Yes, but our recent history is not very good, I said, and this calls into question our entire history. So let her attack me as she wants, but nothing good is in store for her. It's probably best for now, Davida said, clinging to me, because I can't believe I have to do this twenty more times. Enough with this already, I said angrily, trying to pull away. Listen to the tone of the conversation, she said, holding me with a surprisingly strong grip. Can't you hear what I'm saying? Do I need to tell you that we had the best sex of my life? The only good sex I ever had? Is this what you want to hear? This is true. You better believe it, smart guy, she said. The sun rises and sets with you. Well then, yes, I need to hear it, I said, turning her over on her back and starting to kiss her breasts. Asshole, she said, sighing briefly when I did something good. But maybe you really needed to hear it. I'm sure you've wondered this question. Yes, a little, I admitted embarrassedly. So now you've heard it. Don't make me repeat this unless you really have to. I don't want you to get out of control. Are you sure of that? I asked. No. Oh, oh no, I'm not sure, she gasped. Wait, wait a second. What? What is your schedule for today? I don't really have one, I said. I need to meet her at 12.30. I would have canceled it, but I promised her mother that I would be there. And then I have to get home to work tomorrow, so I have to leave no later than 8.30. 12.30 is still far away. That's what I think. We're probably both hungry, but we can put it off. I think we need to have sex, take a shower, and then you go to the meeting. Then you will come back here and take me to eat. It sounds good. And to some decent place. A little bird told me that you have enough money to take me to a nice place. A smart bird, but she has a big mouth. Maybe she can help you choose. Then we'll come back here, have sex and take another shower, repeat as necessary until you have to go home. You're a genius with schedules. Is it not? Can I say one more thing? Can I stop you? Of course you can. But what I want to say before you go is that I like where this is going between us. Me too, but why are you saying this now? I hope we will be busy until the very last moment, she said. I'll stick to the bet, she said. I don't want to seem too intrusive, but I hope that by the time we've done this twenty more times, we'll have spent enough time out of bed to understand what lies ahead. I don't want to hurt you by saying this, but it seems fast, I said. Nothing against you, but I kind of feel bad that I did this now. I haven't resolved anything with her yet. I didn't listen to what she had to say. Okay, she said, leaning back, creating a little space between us, but still stroking me. Maybe it's really too early. Maybe it's too fast. Do you feel like I'm putting pressure on you? Well, no, not really, but I... Oh, you feel it, she said. I forget that I'm done with my asshole a long time ago. You're hurt, you still love her, your whole world is destroyed in a few hours. I don't know if I love her, I said. When I think about what happened, I'm sure it didn't, but then... It's okay to be a mess, honey, she said. So what should I do? I asked in agony. What the hell should I do? You ask me? She looked at me in amazement. God, you must be really desperate for advice. I, the little mouse that was had forever. Me, who of course, has an interest in the result. I'm still asking, I said. 
I'm asking because you've been through this for so long, and I don't care about your intentions. What would you like to do? What would I like to do? What would I do if I were you? Yes, you obviously need to talk to her, so do it. Find out. To find out that? Find out the truth, she said, turning over on her side. Her breasts were lying on top of each other. The light from the window created an insanely deep cleavage that looked as sexy as anything I'd ever seen. It's not easy to hear her say, I'm sorry. Of course she apologizes, but you have ammunition. You have her words behind your back. Compare them with what she says now and see what you believe, but don't play this trump card right away. Move on from there. And try not to get angry, I guess, I said. I don't think I'm developed enough for this. Who said you can't be upset? Davida asked. These are terrible, terrible things. I wasn't going to give them to you because it was too painful. Then why did you give it? Because it was so terrible. And she was there, having sex with him, you know. You had to know why, because she could have turned it around, made Brad worse than he was, if that was possible. Knowledge is power, I said with a smile. Exactly. So. So. Bid. Schedule. Is all this still valid? I don't see why not, I said. This time we will have sex. Davida must have seen the future because I was actually late to Karen's house. We had sex for a long time and passionately until we were exhausted, and when we got into the shower it turned out that we were not quite finished yet, so I was twenty minutes late. I thought you wouldn't come, Karen said with relief when she opened the door. Sorry for being late, I said. I should have called. I didn't mean to be so inconsiderate. It's okay, she said. We're just glad you're here. She's in the backyard. When I saw Gloria, I knew she came ready for war. It was warm in the backyard, and she was sitting at the glass table in her burgundy shorts and purple and white knit top, which I loved. Oh, how I loved this outfit. It wasn't overly sexy. She probably knew better than to try that after yesterday, but it accentuated her long, pale legs and was tight enough to hint at her incredible body, if you were aware. Her hair was in perfect order, flowing over her shoulders and begging to be touched, which, of course, emphasized her glowing green eyes. Hello, she said uncertainly. Hello, I said monotonously. However, the overall effect of the outfit was somewhat diminished by the rings under her bloodshot eyes. She had light makeup on, but it couldn't hide the pinched expression on her face that she got when she was incredibly hungover. I saw this many times in the mornings and afternoons leading up to her dewy arrest. She was clearly feeling bad. Well, good, because I felt bad too. We sat and looked at each other, and as wheeze the silence continued, it became clear to Karen that this was not good. For God's sake, you too, she said. This is ridiculous. You're here to talk, so start talking. You're staying? I asked. I want her to stay, said Gloria. You can be intimidating when you're angry. I'm fine with that, I said, turning to Karen. I didn't ask you to leave. Darling, start, said Karen. I want to, said Gloria. Rick, I'm sorry. Is it true? I asked. Yes, Rick, I'm so, so sorry. For what? I asked through clenched teeth. Because you were caught having sex with that guy? Because I saw you do it or maybe for the way you humiliated me and embarrassed me in front of a hundred people. For everything, for everything, she said modestly. I was an idiot. I take full responsibility, well, almost completely. Almost, I said dryly. We both know I have a problem, she said. I should never have taken that first drink. Everything went downhill after that, and I couldn't stop. Oh, really? I said. As far as I remember, you were hanging on him and treating me like crap long before the first drink. I know, she said. I was completely beside myself. She leaned forward. But do you know what I think? Tell me. I think someone must have slipped me something, she said conspiratorially. Before that, I mean, this is the only explanation why I behave this way, don't you think? I mean, it's not me. You know it. Wow. Tactically, I thought it was too early to play this card. She would have been better off persuading me more first. That makes sense, Karen said. Why else would she act so strangely? But why, I asked. 
Well, let's take you to the hospital and do some tests. Right now. If there is something, we must file a complaint. No, no, Gloria said quickly. I'm sure it's all out of my system by now. It's a pity that you didn't take me yesterday. And anyway, what could I prove even if it was there? Nobody saw this. And I didn't have sex with him, she said with conviction. You didn't have sex, I said. It wasn't a question. I think Davida has a video on her phone that says otherwise. Is there a video? She howled. Oh my God, Rick. Don't worry, I said. You won't be on the internet, although you deserve it. The video was taken by a woman for evidence, not some sneaky guy, although I'm surprised he didn't have anything recorded. I think we'll find out. But that's all, she insisted. This idiot, he had sex with me. You saw me. I wasn't even there, not really. I didn't even know what was happening. You know how I become. Oh, of course I know, I said sarcastically. Where were you, she sobbed. I know I screwed up, but where were you? You just left me there, all alone. You let these guys take advantage of me. You are my husband. You should have saved me. To save you from yourself, that's what you say. Oh, this is great. So it's somehow my fault, right? No. She fell silent. That's not what I'm saying. I take full responsibility for how it all started, but you had to be there, Rick. We both made mistakes. I know what I did, I said. I admit it. Okay, she said, breathing out a sigh of relief. So can we. But before you say anything, wait a minute, I said, standing up. I forgot something. Be right back. Where are you going? Asked Karen. I think she thought I was going to run away. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere, I said. There's something I had to bring. Let me take this away. As I walked out to the car, I thought about what Davida said earlier. I didn't care what her motives were or where we were going. She did me the greatest favor of my life. Gloria was so confident in herself that she didn't even try to play along with her bullshit line. She just came and attacked me as best she could. Spin? Damn it, she was a helicopter. What is this? Gloria asked as I returned and threw a stack of documents onto the table in front of her with a dramatic plop. Oh, is this a small thing? It doesn't look like it, Gloria, but it's rope. You just hung yourself on it. H.M. Look, I said. This is the whole story of your text messages with Brad. Is that? Wait a minute, what? That's it, Gloria. Davida had something on his phone. Come on, take a look. I moved them towards her, but she recoiled as if from poison, which is essentially what it was. Tears began to stream down her cheeks. What is it? Asked Karen. What is this? I think Davida called it educational reading, I told her. Let's go to page nine where she said to start. I think this is a good place. No, Gloria whispered, starting to cry harder. And you think we can really do this? This is Brad asking. Here is the answer from my loving wife. I know we can. How, he is asking. I'm going crazy. I must be completely over the edge. He'll hate it and we'll fight. If I treat him like crap, he'll leave. He always leaves to calm down and not be too mean to me. Find a way to keep him occupied, and we'll have all the time we need. Will this work? Oh yeah, if you knew what kind of crap I did. He's used to it. I'll have to lick his ass for a while, but not for long. He'll be angry, but he'll pass. And we'll have fun. Yes, but what about Dee Dee? Already taken care of. How? Hope will take over. Why? Because I'll stop this with her if she doesn't take it. Hope, too. You're so bad. And you know what, Karen? There's a winking face emoji at the end. But wait, that's the best for me. They discuss the details for a few more lines, and then she says, But if we get caught, you'll be the one to blame. I'll say you drugged me, then I'll turn it against him and make him feel guilty. That's what I've always done. Me? You started this. Don't worry. I'll make sure he doesn't follow you. I can handle him. Oh, I know, love, but can you handle me? And at this moment it ends. Gloria. Gloria, is this true? Asked Karen. She refused to answer for a long time. I sat and looked at her calmly, 
crossing my arms. Okay, yes, she said. I know it's bad, but Rick, honey, we can get through this. I love you, only you, I swear. It's just nonsense, nonsense. He, and she started crying again. Just tell us, honey. To her credit, Karen must really love Gloria if she's willing to cheer her on after finding out what a manipulative bitch she is. Her daughter. I myself was interested in hearing her explanations just for fun. Brad was always something I could never get. She trembled, gathering herself a little. He was so handsome back then, and he was so, so horrible to me. I just wanted. I just wanted him to want me and realize how stupid he was for not being with me all this time. So you never loved me, I spat. Of course I love you, she said, trying to grab my hand. I pulled away. You are my only one. You always will be, I swear. But it was just. He was just. I don't know. I think he was someone I couldn't forget. Oh, Gloria, Karen said. It didn't start out like that, Gloria said defensively. At first I just wanted to make sure that he would see me, see us, and be tormented by jealousy, you know. But then I saw a photo of him and Davida, and he still looked so good, and she was so beautiful. Well, I just knew I couldn't compete with that. I think what she's saying, Karen, I said with some mixed feelings of laughter and irritation, is that I was the reason she couldn't compete. I'm not good looking enough to make Brad jealous. She would be ashamed of me, isn't it? She didn't say anything, but the tears started flowing again. But you saw the messages, you saw how he worked on me, she insisted. He kept saying that I've outgrown you, why am I with you, and that he's sure that you don't value me. This is all nonsense, I said. You started this, not him. The part about me being ugly, this is probably true, but the rest. I worshipped you, Gloria. I know, she said. I knew it even when I believed what he said. And then I came up with this plan where I would let him have sex with me. You're crazy, asked Karen. A guy like him doesn't care about something like that. The main thing is that he gets what he wants. You always boasted that you were a great judge of people, my dear, but you acted like a naive, spoiled little girl. I know, Mom. We can go to counseling, Rick. It was just a stupid hobby that allowed me to go too far. It didn't mean anything. It was. Don't continue, you creature. I barked. Don't you dare say it was just sex if that's what you're getting at. First of all, sex was especially important between us, or so I thought. He was supposed to be only ours for life. I know, Rick. I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. Leave it alone, I interrupted her. Even if it's true, what about those messages? The ones where you said I was stupid and easily manipulated. I didn't mean it, honey, you should. I don't want to discuss this anymore. And don't call me darling. You don't have the right to do this. You're a manipulative bitch. I will never trust you again. Rick, Karen said, shocked. Stop that. Stop talking to her like that. I know she did something terrible, but can't you see how sorry she is? I'm sure you two can fix this. You've been together so long that. And here's another thing, I said angry. What about loyalty? Gloria, I never told you about the hell I went through for you in high school because it would have hurt you too much, but there were some things you should have known. Everyone, and I mean everyone, wanted me to leave you because you were so terrible. I was screaming and finally realized it, so I lowered my tone, taking a deep breath. And this is how you thank me, right? And you said you've been planning this since you had eye surgery. No, Gloria said in horror. No, it's not like that, dear. I just meant that I planned to come back beautiful. That's all, I swear. Leave it. How can I believe even one word of yours? I said contemptuously. You lie and cheat. So you started this conversation before I caught you cheating. I never. Stop it, Karen begged. Stop it, both of you, right now. I can't believe this is happening. You are finally getting ready to give me grandchildren. Can't you too? Oh, grandchildren, I laughed, grabbing the file. Should we tell her about our children, Gloria? Please don't, she sobbed, burying her head in her hands. Please stop. Oh, no, 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 I said. Let's look at page 11, towards the end. Let's see what's there. Are you sure? asks Brad. I'm sure, 
Gloria replies. I haven't had sex with him in a week. Should be free for you. I'll try to keep him away, and if you have strong swimmers, you have the best chance. Why? I want at least one beautiful child, then he can give birth to me, but I want at least one. And you can't get it with him? What do you think? And look here, Karen, I said, showing her the page. Do you see? There's a smiley face with its tongue sticking out. Do you see? Could she humiliate me even more? Oh God, Karen said, looking at Gloria with disgust. Actually, she could, I said. I'm lost here, I can't find it now, but somewhere here she says that she will give him two chances at the meeting, and if it doesn't work out, she will meet him somewhere in the middle to be sure. Can you stop? Gloria sobbed. And she says if the baby is especially beautiful, they might make another one in the future. He says how much he will like it that I am raising and paying for his child, and she replies that secrets are exciting. You just beat me like a punching bag, didn't you? I said, spinning around and getting closer to Gloria's face. And here I thought you were just trying to add variety. Karen sat back in her chair, and I thought she looked just as beaten as Gloria. I love you, I said, walking up and kissing her on the top of her head. I hope we can talk soon and I can thank you for everything, but I can't be there for her. I think you understand. No, I can't imagine that you can, she said sadly. I'll leave this with you, I said, throwing the papers back on the table. I'm sure I can get another copy for the lawyers. Wait, Rick, how am I going to get home? Gloria asked. How will I get to work tomorrow? I don't know, I don't care, I said. And when you get there, you won't stay in the house. Find one of your bitch friends to live with or hang out with a bunch of guys. Who cares? The locks will be changed upon your return. This is my home too bastard. Gloria screamed. I paid the same amount as you. I put as much time into it as you do. Don't even think about contacting me about this. Things will get very ugly. Ugly, ha, I said. Excellent choice of words. That's what it was all about. The ride back to the hotel was difficult. Of course, I pressed her hard, but so what? The love of my life turned out to be a cheating, manipulative creature who thought I was too ugly to be the father of her children. I may have won the race of life with Brad, earning twice as much, certainly in a better, more promising field, but he ended up winning, just like before, simply because he was so much better looking than me. I liked her a lot, but Davida was not Gloria, who, no matter what, will always be the coolest girl I knew. Nothing will change this. I'm going to have to learn to appreciate other things about Davida if we're going to build anything. I really liked her. She wanted to see what would happen and was willing to try, despite the terrible baggage we both carried. Maybe it's not just a rebound. Who knows how cool she might turn out to be after we've been together 20 actually 21 times, and it's still 21. I tried to tell her that it was now down to 15 or 16, but she said it should be counted by sessions, not by the number of times we had sex. In her opinion, we were still in the middle of the first session, which was pretty cool of her, right? Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.